can start standing towards the top of your mat. Arms can just be at your side in Tadasana. And with nice soft knees, don't lock your knees. Let's just go ahead and close our eyes. Take a nice easy inhale. And a nice easy exhale. Let your awareness settle there onto your breath. And let your breath grow a little longer and a little deeper. As you inhale, feel your inhale flow all the way down. Root your feet into the ground. And as you exhale, feel your exhale float all the way up and out the crown of your head. And just take a few breaths like that. Really feel your feet on the earth. Feel your head reaching towards the sky. Let your shoulders soften. And just feel how it feels to be in this body right now. Just being present to this moment. Sometimes when things are being crazy around us, coming and just being in our physical body and doing something physical with our body can be such a great practice for us. So it's beautiful to be here together and just do some physical yoga. Let's go ahead and set an intention, whatever you'd like to focus on for yourself during this time on your mat. And whatever that is, hold it in the space of your heart and take a few more nice long breaths. And then when you're ready, you can open your eyes. So we're going to continue to build on the sun salutations that we did last week. And anybody joining me on Instagram, I can't see all the way over there, so I'm happy that you're here, but I can see a couple people here. So we're building on what we did last week, and let's just warm up with some what I call quarter sun salutations. So just forward folding and then back up. So take a big inhale, reach the arms to the sky. Exhale, fold forward, reaching towards the floor. Inhale, take your hands to your chins, come up about halfway, make a nice flat back. Exhale, fold back down. Try that a couple more times. Inhale, halfway up, make a nice flat back. Exhale, fold back down. And again, inhale, halfway up, make a nice flat back. Exhale, fold back down. And inhale, root through your feet, sweep your arms out and all the way up. And exhale, hands can find your heart and all the way down. So if you were with me last week, we started to build our sun salutation. And we did a quarter sun salutation, a half, a three quarter, and the whole thing. And we went through all the poses, but I wanna, as we go through these weeks, break down each pose a little bit, and then we're gonna introduce two new poses each session. So the pose of our sun salutation I wanna break down a little bit today is just our forward fold. So this time, take a big inhale, reach the arms to the sky. As you exhale, fold forward, and let's just hold it here for a moment. So for some of us, the hands might reach the floor. If they don't reach the floor, that's okay. But they're just reaching down towards the ground. But as you're here, without locking your knees backwards, engage the thighs, let the legs be straight but not locked, and think about taking the heart towards the knees. Let your head hang down, and just be here for a couple breaths. Feel your feet on the ground. Notice if you've got more weight over your toes or more weight over your heels. See if you can be nice and even. And really think about heart towards the knees rather than just trying to bring the head in. So the spine is trying to stay really long. That's one of our most basic alignments in yoga is no matter how we're moving, whether we're forward folding, backward bending, or twisting, which are the three ways that our spine moves, we want to make a length in our spine rather than shortening our spine because the movement comes in the space between the bones. So we're thinking about long spine, reaching the heart down, not too worried about the head. It can just hang however it is. And then if we want to add a little more, we can think about trying to actively reach our sit bones up towards the ceiling. And that gives us just this kind of subtle anterior tilt of our pelvis, so our pelvis is tilting forward a little bit. We can still find some lift in our belly and give an energetic hook to our tailbone at the base of our spine. So we could just curl it like we had a tail, almost like your finger can curl. And we can be there for another big breath. 
and then hands to the shins, and we'll come halfway up, and let's be here for a moment. So here, we're having a long spine too. We can see it a little more easily here. Heart shining forward. And hold this for a moment. Think about the thighs being strong. We're actively reaching the sit bones back behind us. And then we'll fold back down and root through both feet and sweep the arms out and all the way up. And then the hands can find the heart and all the way down. All right. So one of the things I love about my yoga room is that it's also my hedgehog room and he has to stay warm. So in the winter, it is nice because it's not hot yoga, but it's slightly warm yoga, like doing yoga in Hawaii. And so I'm already warm here as we're starting this. So to introducing two new poses today, uh, and we'll get back to our sun salutation after we introduce our first of our two new poses. So I want to introduce tree pose today and then child pose. So for tree pose, tree pose is going to be our first balancing pose of this yoga basics series might be our only balancing pose. I haven't quite decided yet. But our first balancing pose, and it's really, really simple, and I always like to give lots of variations to almost every pose that I teach, and so tree pose will be no different. So there's lots of places that you can start. If you're in your house and you're really new to balancing or your balance, you feel like it's off for any reason, you can always do your tree pose next to a wall, and you can use your hand on the wall. But we will have variations so that you can pick a variation that works for you, uh, regardless of needing a wall. So standing on your right foot, we're just going to shift our weight a little bit to the right. We're going to think about how we fell into Dasana last week. So feet nice and solid, shoulders down and back, belly hugging in. Shift our weight to our right, and then our options are that our left foot can come just to our ankle, and the toes can actually stay on the ground. So it's almost like a little kickstand. That can be option one. And if Tree pose is challenging for you. You can work on this option and just start to get the foot to be a little light on the ground and you can kind of play with it there. Option two is that our foot's going to come to our calf. Whichever option we pick, we can bring our hands to our heart. Option three is you can grab your foot and you can take your foot up to your thigh and your hands can find your heart. So a few different things to think about in our tree pose. One is that we want to hug the belly button in, give the tailbone an uh, energetic hook and find our core. The other is that we want our foot and our leg to be pressed together equally. I like to start with hands at the heart because that always helps too. The hands are pressing together, the foot and the leg are pressing together. So we're not overpowering our leg with our foot or vice versa while I play around and <laughs> fall over trying to show you guys how to overpower your leg. All right, and then when you're ready, arms can go out and all the way up. Think about shoulders away from the ears, just like in our Tadasana. So we don't have to bring the hands all the way together. Um, some styles of yoga do that. I like to have the arms wide so the shoulders can be down our back. Take a couple breaths. And then go ahead and lower that down. Give both legs a little wiggle. And we'll try the other side. So standing on the left, lifting up the right. Again, you can decide foot to ankle, foot to calf or the foot all the way up to the thigh. And then think about everything squeezing in front to back. So we've got the core squeezing in, the belly button squeezing in, the tailbone hooking, and then everything side to side too. So the foot and the leg are pressing together, hands are pressing together, and then the arms can go out and all the way up. Shoulders soften down the back, heart lifts up. Take a couple breaths. And we'll go ahead and lower that down. Give both legs a little wiggle. And come right back up to the top of your mat. And let's go down for a half salutation like we did last week. So big inhale, arms to the sky. Exhaling, fold forward, just like we did before. Inhale, halfway up. Make your nice, flat back, long spine. Exhale, fold in this time. Plant the hands, bend the knees a lot. And let's walk the knees back to all fours. So hands underneath the shoulders, knees under the hips. One thing I want to mention tonight, as we're getting into these uh, basic poses and learning our alignments and things, whenever your hands are on the ground, spread your fingers as wide as possible, index fingers facing forward even a little bit out, and press through the pads of your fingers and all the pads of your hands. So your hands are just like hanging out on the ground all loose, 
to really pressing down. Let's move our spine a little bit. So inhale, arch look up towards the sky. Exhale, round your back up towards the ceiling. Try that a few times. Inhale, arch and look up. And exhale, round it back. Back and forth a couple more times. Moving with your breath. Moving our spine. And then the last time we can round it up. Let's take the hands forward six inches or so in front of our shoulders. And we'll find a downward dog. If you don't want to do downward dog, stay right there on all fours. If you do want a downward dog, lengthen the knees up, reaching the hips back. Take a couple breaths. We're pressing strong through our arms. Still, fingers spread wide, pressing through the finger pads. If you feel like the backs of your legs are tight, and if you feel like your back is rounded and it's hard to get your back long, bend your knees a little bit and really reach your sit bones back so the spine can be long. And if you practice your down dog with bent knees, that's totally okay. And over time, you can slowly start to straighten them but keep the spine nice and long. Remember, we were talking about the spine being long being super important. Take one more big breath. And then we'll walk our feet back forward towards our hands, find our forward fold. And inhale halfway up, make a nice flat back. Exhale, fold back down. And inhale, root your feet, sweep your arms out and up. And exhale, hands can find your heart. And all the way down. All right, take a moment, take a breath. So again, it's such a beautiful thing to do, to come and do a physical yoga practice when the world is chaotic around us. Because when we come and we're just in the body and in the present moment, kind of by default, just being here, being present, um, it starts to, I think, calm us when we can come and just be in the physical body. So being here in tree pose, I think, is a really beautiful pose to kind of embody that. Like if you think about a tree, and when you do your tree pose, kind of think about trying to be a tree. The tree is there, rooted into the ground, experiencing whatever's going on around it, and it's still able to just be there and be solid. So let's think about that when we do this tree pose on each side this time. Standing on your right foot, lifting up your left. Again, you can decide ankle, calf, or thigh. Hands at your heart. And then arms out and all the way up when you're ready. Shoulders down, heart lifts up. Think about embodying the idea of being a tree. So it's rooting into the ground, your head and your branches. Your arms are reaching up to the sky. If you want to play around, you can even let your branches blow around, but still have that nice strong root, nice strong core. And then bring everything back to stillness. And we'll go ahead and lower down, give everything a wiggle. And we'll try the other side, standing on the left foot, lifting up the right foot, ankle, calf, or thigh. If you're like me tonight, I hope your pants aren't slick. <laughs> so hands at your heart, arms out and up when we're ready. Same thing, feel that root, that standing foot rooting you into the earth, shoulders away from the ears, heart lifting up. Maybe the wind comes and blows your branches, but it doesn't change that rootedness. It doesn't change that you're tied there to the earth and the earth is there underneath you, supporting you. And we'll come back to stillness and go ahead and lower down, give everything a wiggle. All right, let's come back up to the top of our mat and we'll go through a full sun salutation this time. Big inhale. Arms to the sky. Exhaling, fold forward. Inhale, halfway up, make your nice flat back. Exhale, fold in, plant your hands, walk your feet back. Plank pose with the top of a push up. Nice strong thighs, lower all the way to the ground. Hands in line with the chest. Toes flip over, inhale, cobra. Doesn't have to be huge. Keep the core nice and strong. And then tuck the toes, your choice. You can come to all fours, or you can come straight to down the dog. And let's take three breaths. Reaching the sit bones back, bend the knees if you need to. And then 
from here, we're gonna head into our second new pose for tonight. So child's pose is a great pose if we need to take a break during a more physical practice, but it's also a great pose just in and of itself. So we're gonna come down onto our knees, but as we do, take your knees wide out to the side of your mat and let your big toes touch behind you. And then we'll sit back over our heels and just sink kind of in between your legs and let your head come to the ground. And just be here and take a few breaths. So child's pose is a really important pose to learn. If you start going to public yoga classes and you need to take a break, you can always take a break in child's pose. And if somebody tells you you can't, you can tell them that you're sorry, but that's what you're gonna do. <laughs> But sitting back over our heels, this is also a great stretch for um, our hips and our glutes and our lower back and the whole back of our body. And as you're here, I encourage you to really feel your breath going into the back of your body. Feel your back ribs expanding with your inhale, drawing back in with your exhale. Feel your back across your shoulder blades. This is also a great pose when things are crazy around us, just to come and fold forward and be here, not only just to turn inward and be here, but to feel that back of your body. Sometimes yogis say that our back body represents our connection to source or God or the universe, whatever you want to think of. And so when we can fold forward and stop kind of paying attention to all the craziness around us, then we can better connect with ourselves, but also feel that connection um, to the universe and source. So take just a couple more breaths. And then look forward. Now we'll tuck the toes and bring the hips up and back, down the dog. Take one big breath. And then walk the feet forward towards the hands, hip distance apart. Inhale, halfway up, make your nice flat back. Exhale, fold in. And inhale, root for the feet. Sweep the arms out and up. And hands can find your heart. One more time through a sun salutation. Big inhale, arms to the sky. Exhale, and fold forward. Inhale, halfway up, make your nice flat back. Exhale, fold and plant the hands. Walk the feet back, plank pose, and exhale, lower all the way down. Keep the shoulders lifted so they don't dump towards the ground. Inhale, cobra, let the shoulders slide away from the ears. Exhale, lower, tuck the toes. Downward facing dog. And take three breaths. If you need to bend the knees, bend the knees. Reach the sit bones back, spread the fingers wide. Come on down, child's pose. Once again, knees out to the side. Sit back over your heels, head to the earth. Take a few breaths. And then look forward. One thing I like to do with child's pose in my practice is just to walk both hands a little over to the right really sink the uh, sit bones and hips over the heels and stretch extra through the left side of your waist, like your left hand's trying to reach the front right corner of your mat. Just really sink down over your heels and get that big stretch along the left side of your waist. Hold that for a couple breaths. And then walk both hands back to the center Still sinking the sit bones over the heels. And then try the other side. Walk both hands over towards the left. So now the right hand's reaching extra far forward towards the left corner of your mat. Really sink the sit bones. Take a couple breaths. And then walk the hands back to the center. And then walk the hands 
all the way up to all fours. And then we'll swing the legs around in the front. And we'll lay down onto our backs. So laying on your back, the legs can go out long. If it's hard on your lower back to keep the legs out long, you can always bend your knees and let your knees touch together with your feet on the ground. Or you can get a pillow or a bolster and put it underneath your knees. Somebody asked last week, so I want to clarify. But otherwise, legs out long, arms can be at your side, palms can face up towards the sky, and we'll find the shape of Shavasana. So you can stay there. I'm going to go ahead and sit up, but be there. I will get you up in a few minutes. But as you come into this shape, let's take a couple nice long breaths. Inhale through your nose, and just exhale out your mouth with a big sigh. And that again, inhale through your nose. And exhale it out with a big sigh. Last one, inhaling through your nose. And exhaling it all the way out. Let your whole body sigh into the ground. Let all your muscles let go of your bones. Let your whole body be heavy and sink into the earth. Losing control that you're holding over your breath. Let the air move in and out on its own. And lastly, of course, let go of any control that you're holding over your mind. Whatever it comes up with to tell you about, you don't have to listen. Just be here and enjoy these last few minutes on your mat as we let our practice sink in. When you start to feel ready, as you can slowly draw your awareness back into your body. And without controlling, just notice your next breath. When it starts to feel good, you can wiggle your fingers and your toes. Maybe start to move your hands and your feet. Maybe roll out your wrists and your ankles. When it feels good, you can reach your arms up overhead and have a big stretch. Maybe take your arms across your chest, give yourself a nice big hug. You can get an extra hug if you like. If you're still on your back, you can bend your knees and plant your feet on the ground, or you can hug your knees all the way into your chest, whichever feels good. And then taking your time, you can roll over to your right side and nice and slowly make your way up to seated. And we'll find legs crossed. Facing the front of your mat, hands can rest on your knees, eyes can stay closed. Crown of your head reaches up towards the sky. As we go 
through your week. I encourage you as much as you can, at least once a day, try to just get into your physical body. I think it does a lot to help ground us and help comfort us in these very different times that we're going through. Let's all bring our hands to touch at our heart. Whatever your intention was today, this evening, or whenever you're watching this video, take your mind back to it for a moment without any judgment, of course. Just check in with yourself and see how it went. And then most importantly, take a moment and honor the light that exists within you and thank yourself for coming to yoga. I thank you all for being here with me as well. And I honor the light within you and within all beings. Namaste.